with six games on the NES and over 50 on various platforms, Mega Man is one of gaming's most prolific franchises. For a series that is so prominent in gaming history, it had a much more humble beginning. When the original Mega Man was released in December of 1987, the basic title and absolutely awful cover art didn't combine to make an instant hit. Nintendo executives didn't think that the anime style used on the Japanese box would appeal to the North American audience, so it was reworked to be grittier. And by grittier, I mean they used what looks like a bad drawing of LA Rams quarterback Jared Goff in his full uniform holding a pistol like he's trying to rob a convenience store. Luckily, the game was popular enough to spawn a sequel, Mega Man 2, which is a cherished classic and often regarded as one of the best NES games ever made. But what about the original? Capcom had the perfect formula with the first release, they just didn't put it in the right box. The story centers on robotic engineers Dr. Thomas Light and his partner, the evil Dr. Wily. When Wily corrupts the robots they've been working on to use in his plot for world domination, Dr. Light reprograms his housekeeping robot named Rock and turns him into the super warrior Mega Man who must destroy the evil robots and restore peace. What really makes the Mega Man series unique is that the player is allowed to choose the order in which they face the Robot Masters. And even more importantly, upon defeating the evil robots, Mega Man will absorb their powers for his own use. Many players are intimidated by the original game and it is often listed as one of the most difficult NES games ever made. The reason is most likely that unlike the later games in the series, there are no passwords to save your progress here, and even more critically, there are no energy tanks to refill your health. Today on You Can Beat Video Games, we will learn that no E-Tanks is no problem with the strategies I'm about to reveal. So what is the best order in which to fight the Robot Masters? How does the Elect Beam trick work, and are there ways to win if you choose not to use it? And how do we get through these insane Dr. Wily levels? We'll learn all of that and more on today's episode. If you're new to the channel, we are doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please subscribe for more videos and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. There is some debate over which Robot Master we should fight first. I'm choosing Fireman. Why Fireman, you may ask? Well, the traditional Nintendo power strategy would be to choose Bomb Man first. And while Bomb Man is the easiest boss to fight with our standard weapon, the Hyper Bomb that we get for beating him, Hyper sucks. If you never used the Hyper Bomb for the entire run of this game, you probably wouldn't be wrong for that. Instead, we're going to get the Fire Weapon first. And that's actually going to be the best weapon to use against all of the garden variety enemies in the game and it's going to give us a huge edge throughout the run. Watch out for these falling tackle fire enemies as you climb the ladder here. Mega Man is one of those NES games that features knockback. So whenever you're near a pit, or another instant death hazard like the lava flow or spikes, you need to be very cautious that you don't hit an enemy while you're jumping from platform to platform. Stay away from these fire sticks here and go into the narrow corridor. I always take damage right here, so don't worry about it. You're going to want to jump out of the pit and head over to the right, where we'll be able to get a little bit of health before we go down the ladder. Now don't immediately jump off of this ladder. There's a flame stick right below. You want to kind of hold to the left a bit. And don't worry about that pit in front of the flame stick. There's an invisible floor below you that you can stand on. Hold to the right as you fall off this ladder so that you land on the platform, and make sure to conserve your health here while avoiding the knockback from the tackle fires. In the next room, we're going to have to deal with some lava flows that are very difficult to avoid, so it's important that we don't lose a lot of health before we get here. Now in this room, if you have the magnet beam weapon, you can kind of magnet beam your way up the left side of the screen, but we don't have it, so just take the hit from the lava and move on. This is the stage's first checkpoint. If you were to die and you still had a life, you'll come back at this point here. Watch out for the killer bullets and make sure to only shoot them when they are far away from you. 
because of the blast radius that occurs when they're hit. And these spine enemies that are low to the ground can actually not be damaged with your standard weapon, so you're going to just have to avoid those as best you can. If we can get through the gate up here, we'll hit another checkpoint, and if we have any lives left, it's probably okay to lose one here so that we can get a health refill. Once we have full health, we'll be ready to face Fireman, but we have to deal with these screwdriver enemies that come out of the ceiling. Stay far to the left of them, jump and shoot them at the peak of your jump. They only take three hits. They're a little bit hard to hit, but as long as you stay far to the left, they will not attack you back. So just be patient and take them out. You want to have probably at least 75% of your health before you fight Fireman, otherwise it's going to be a little bit dicey in there. One more screwdriver. Basically I'll describe the Fireman strategy. Once we get into the room, we're going to face right and just start shooting him. It's not really necessary to try to jump to avoid his flames. I'll show you what that looks like. It doesn't really help you very much, and you may actually do less damage if you're jumping. So just keep the heat up on Fireman, just keep shooting him, and the invincibility that we gain from his attack will eventually win out and we'll defeat him. Once we get into Bomb Man stage, we will soon see how effective that Firestorm weapon is. Press Start and choose F to equip it, and we will be facing some flea enemies, which can be dealt with in one hit with the Firestorm. It also produces a shield around you when you press the button, which is very effective for enemies that attack you from behind. Against these bomb bomb enemies, just get up close to the pillar where there's a safe spot, wait for the explosion, jump out, and move on to the right. You'll notice that the firestorm is very effective against these screwdrivers, and we'll have an opportunity here to pick up some health and refill the firestorm before we head up the ladder. In Mega Man, there are a lot of drops that the enemies leave that will refill our weapons, so it is okay to use them very liberally. These enemies are called blasters or beaks. They're only defeatable when they're open, but we can just avoid them. And up here we're going to fight our first Sniper Joe. Sniper Joe can be manipulated by jumping. Whenever you jump, it'll trigger him to either jump himself or fire at you. Either way, he will be vulnerable. Try to avoid the killer bullets here and destroy the beaks. We definitely don't want to take any knockback into the pit. You'll see how effective the fire weapon is against the spines that we couldn't destroy in the previous stage. And we'll head up for the first checkpoint. Jump over to the first platform, wait for the bullet, and continue to jump behind it to the left. This shell enemy will continue to spawn from the right no matter how many times you destroy it, so you need to be very careful when jumping from platform to platform, as the spikes below are an instant death hazard. Wait for an opening and climb up this ladder. And if you stay on the top shelf here, you'll be able to snag a quick one up while avoiding a sniper Joe. Over here we'll find the gate which will lead us on to Bomb Man, but we first have to defeat one more Sniper Joe, which once again we will manipulate by jumping. Jump, 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 shoot. Head through the gate, and try to stay all the way to the right as you fall here. Usually that will be enough to avoid damage, but sometimes I get hit on the second screen. Oh, got me there. Keep your fire weapon equipped. If you run out of it, it's okay, switch over to the Mega Buster. It's almost as effective. Bomb Man will either stay in the corner and lob bombs at you, or he'll just jump back and forth over your head. Either way, shoot him whenever he's on the ground and you will take him out very quickly. The next robot master that we'll face will be Gutsman. 
Gutsman has the most difficult platforming section in the entire game right at the beginning of his stage, but the good news is, is that there are unlimited continues in this game, so if you run out of lives and die here, you can pick right back up where you left off with a simple continue. Use the Firestorm to defeat these hard hat enemies, they are only vulnerable when the hat is up, and jump to the green platform. You're safe when you're up here on the top shelf, but down below there are bare spots, so pay attention to the left side of the platform for the cue as to when the platform will drop out from under you, but make sure you time your jumps early. If you're standing on the platform whenever it drops out, you will die instantly, and you will not have a chance to jump and escape. The flame weapon will work very well against the bladers, and also these picket men, which can be killed in one shot. Blaze your way through the picket men, avoid those instant death hazards below, and you're going to want to hold to the left a bit when you fall down to catch this platform, and hold to the left again and we'll be able to collect some of these goodies before we continue down. Hold left again and we'll have a chance at this one up, and we're going to encounter the game's first big eye. The big eyes either do small shallow jumps or tall high jumps. When you see the tall high jump, you want to kind of run under the big eye. If you get hit by it, just keep moving on. I don't recommend fighting the big eye. It'll just be a depletion of your resources. Once we get to Gutsman's chamber, let's equip the bomb weapon. And we can stand up on the platform here and just lob the bombs down at him to the right. He may come up close to you, but it only takes three bombs to take out Gutsman. In this room with the high ground, it's probably easier to use the bomb weapon than it is to use your standard shot, but your standard shot does fire much more quickly, so it is also a viable way to defeat Gutsman. Gutsman's weapon is practically required to defeat Elekman, so that's why he's next on our list. I will briefly show you what the Guts weapon can do. We can equip it by pressing start and selecting G, and you can use it to pick up these boulders, which when thrown will split into four pieces and can obliterate the enemies in front of them. Unfortunately, the boulders themselves are very limited, so we're going to stay with the Firestorm when fighting the Beaks and the Bladers in this area. Remember that the Beaks can only be defeated when they are open, and continue up the ladder for the next part of Cutsman stage. This stage is a very vertical type level, so we'll want to clear each screen of enemies before ascending the ladders so that we don't get knocked down to the bottom. This stage is much more difficult to traverse without the Firestorm weapon, but since we have it, we will be using it very often here. You can use the shield to take out that enemy below you. Make sure to clear out these two beaks before climbing the ladder or I'll show you what will happen. See, the beak will hit you almost every time, so just take it out. And up here, we will find our first instance of super cutters. Just head straight over to the right, destroy the fleas, and avoid those super cutters. They'll just keep spawning forever if you try to fight them. Over here, we'll encounter some octopus batteries, which can be easily destroyed with our Firestorm weapon. Hopefully something will drop us a refill for the Firestorm soon, or we may need to switch back to our standard shot. Oh, there it is. Also a health refill. As stated before, the weapon refills are very common enemy drops in this game, so feel free to use your Firestorm as much as you need here. The shield is very effective for taking out that octopus battery, and we should be able to quickly ascend this ladder, taking us to the top of the stage. Head over to the right past the super cutters, and we will begin descending down the backside of Cutsman's lair. There's some extra health there if you need it. Watch out for this shell enemy. Just like before in Bomb Man stage, the shells will keep spawning from the right, so look for an opening and head down. Definitely make sure to avoid those spikes. You do not want to be knocked back into an instant death hazard. At the bottom, there's another big eye enemy. Hopefully you can run underneath it, but if you can't, just keep moving forward. 
and we have the Firestorm weapon to deal with the screwdrivers in this corridor before we fight Cutsman. Now when we face Cutsman, we're going to want to equip our Guts weapon, and there are two boulders for us to throw at Cutsman in this room. If we connect with both of them, he will be easily defeated. Now if you miss with the boulders, you'll want to switch to your standard shot and try to trap him in a corner and continue to jump over the shears that he will throw at you. The next boss on our hit list is Elecman. Elecman is by far the most difficult of the six bosses to defeat with our standard weapon, so we certainly won't be using our standard weapon when we fight against him. Use the Firestorm to defeat the spines in this room, and there's a little bit of tricky platforming here, you need to leap at the very edge of these platforms, but there's not a major consequence for messing it up, so just take your time and climb up the ladder. We'll fight a couple more spines here, and continue on up the ladder. And in the next room, there's going to be some electricity turrets. We will avoid the electricity on the bottom by jumping up to the left of it, so just watch the top electricity and continue up the ladder. These enemies are called Watchers. When you're fighting the Watchers, if you get hit, you want to make sure to grab the ladder as you fall. If you end up on the screen below you, it will respawn those enemies, and you'll have to face them again. It is possible to get between the beams that the watchers shoot. And up here, we're going to find the vanishing blocks, which is a Mega Man tradition. Stand on this small platform, just keep jumping, and hopefully you'll land on it when it appears. Once you get that, you're going to wait till the last second to jump to the right, and climb up the ladder. Up here, a platform will appear to our left. There it is, one, two, three, and after the fourth one will jump, a fifth platform will not appear, so continue up the ladder. I don't recommend picking up the health here. Jumping out from underneath that ledge is difficult, and it may put you in the pit, which is an instant death hazard. Continue up the ladder. I like to choose the left side ladder here while facing off of these watchers. The right side is also viable but I think the left is a little bit easier based on the equipment that we currently have. We can use our Firestorm to take out the spine enemies here. You can also use Cutsman's weapon to defeat the spines if you need to, but we will need Cutsman's weapon to defeat the boss, so we may want to conserve it a bit. It's also effective against the Watcher enemies and can destroy an entire grouping of them if you shoot it correctly but make sure you save at least several uses of Cutsman's weapon to defeat Electman later. This is the Magnet Beam. We're going to use the Guts weapon to pick up the blocks that are surrounding it, and the Magnet Beam is going to be critical for our success in this game. It's kind of like item 1, 2, and 3 from Mega Man 2 or the Rush equipment that we'll get in the later Mega Man games in that it's a platforming aid. We can use the magnet beam to create platforms that we can walk on, and we will need that to avoid some hazards, especially in the Dr. Wily levels. Now avoid the electricity here. I use the firestorm in case that flea jumps on me. Continue up. We can use the magnet beam here to bypass this platforming section pretty handy, just shoot it far. You want to make a long platform here. Climb up the ladder. Very easy. We can also use it to skip these electricity turrets here. Head around the back of them. And here's our big eye, which we just want to get under, and we will be able to ascend the ladder to a Lechman. I'm equipping Cutsman's weapon early. It's not super important to do that. Just take your time, you don't want to get hit by the electricity here, wait for it to clear. And we will need to do one more room of electricity before we reach the boss. When we fight Elecman, he will appear in the room, his energy will fill up. We want to shoot Cutsman's weapon immediately as soon as we have the first opportunity to do so, so we catch him with that first hit. 
We'll only need to hit him two more times after that, but getting that first one will make it so much easier. One, two, three, the Lech Man dies, and we can move on to our final boss. Our last boss is Iceman, and it's not the one from Top Gun. As usual, we will start by equipping our Firestorm weapon, and we're going to encounter the Crazy Razy enemy. This guy has a top and a bottom section, and you'll want to attack the top part. Otherwise, if you destroy just the bottom section, the top will fly and attack you, and it's much more easy to deal with just to destroy the top. You'll notice when you jump into the water that you have slightly different jump physics, but fight these Pang enemies and the spines with your Firestorm weapon, and you should have no problem getting through this area. Climb out here at the end, and we will have an opportunity to refill our health if you've taken any damage. Make sure to destroy those octopus batteries if you do intend to collect the health. Now when we drop down here, we'll face the vanishing blocks again, clear out the spine on the bottom. Now you can certainly use the magnet beam to jump over these, but I'm going to show you the standard pattern if you don't want to use it. But the magnet beam will make that much easier. Let's definitely use it here. So we'll get onto one of the blocks and equip the magnet beam. Small platform, small platform, and we're out of that hole. Now we need to cross a very large gap. Shoot the longer magnet beam platforms. You may want to drop down and refill the magnet beam there. Try to avoid the pangs that will fly in here. The magnet beam should keep you safe, but don't stand on it for too long. You can get an extra life down here to the left. You can refill your health and any of your weapons right here. We're going to use the Elect weapon to face off with Iceman. Down here at the bottom there's another big guy. We can actually skip him if we use the magnet beam. There you go. Just jump right on over. I will equip the Firestorm again for this corridor. It is another checkpoint. Take out these pangs. I do believe they spawn infinitely, so just keep heading to the right. Grab the Elect Beam. We want to make sure to hit Iceman as soon as possible with the Elect Beam, so as soon as you can, shoot it. And he'll drop back down, shoot it again, and shoot it again. Three hits is all it takes, and you've defeated Iceman. Very, very easy. You will see when we return to the menu here that we have a new option to select. Dr. Wily. Dr. Wily's stage is comprised of four sections, each with a boss at the end. If you were to lose all your lives and die in any of the sections, you can continue and return at the beginning of that section with full lives and full weapons. It may be worthwhile to do a suicide at the beginning of each section just to do a nice refill. This first section may actually be the most difficult one. We'll use the ice weapon to freeze these big eyes in place while they're in the air, and then you can run right underneath them. If you're a little bit late, you will hit the big eyes, so be very careful with that. Perfect freeze there. Now we're going to come over here to the right and use the guts weapon to clear out some blocks in front of us. We can also use the elect beam, but we would prefer to conserve that for later. Use your ice weapon to freeze these fire sticks when they are moving downwards. If you try to freeze them when they're moving up, you may hit the one behind it in a bad position, and then you'll have to wait for them to unfreeze and do it again. We can use the magnet beam to be extra safe here. And we should switch to the elect beam when we ascend the ladder, so that we can hit this enemy before it hits us. If you don't use the elect beam there, there's a good chance that you'll be hit while you're on the ladder, and you'll fall back down below. 
Now over here, we'll be able to get a health refill. We'll need to use the Elec Beam to clear out the first block above us. And then we can switch to the Magnet Beam to ascend to the platform above. Magnet Beam. Platform. And we can use the Guts weapon here to remove this and destroy the fleet behind it. Refill our health. Come back down here, clear out these enemies. Use the Guts weapon to clear the blocks. And this is going to bring us to the stage's first checkpoint. It's a very dangerous checkpoint though. As you cross these small platforms, be very careful not to get knocked back into the spikes. If you can get it into a position where the bullet is behind you, you'll be in good shape to move forward. Head down here. We're going to avoid these footholders and use the magnet beam to cross here. Be very careful though not to hit the ceiling. The ceiling is definitely an instant death hazard. Now we can drop down here and refill our magnet beam. And if we climb the ladder and then come back down, you're going to notice that we can refill our weapons again. And we can do this infinitely. It's kind of like a pizza station from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. And we're definitely going to need full magnet beam here, and we should also refill our elect beam as well. Alright, refill the elect beam. And head back up. Now we'll need to use that magnet beam to climb out here. If you mess it up, you'll need to go back down and refill your magnet beam below. A couple more platforms, and we'll catch the ladder above us and we'll reach the second checkpoint right before the boss. Now, this is the most difficult boss in the entire game. Switch to the elect beam, run to the middle of the room and get ready to jump. You only need to jump over rocks that are coming at you on the lowest and second lowest level, and on the fourth jump, we need to make a big jump that clears two rocks. It's very difficult to do when they're coming from the left and you can't see where the rocks are coming from. But it's a little bit easier when you can see the monster transferring himself from the left and the right. So we count one, two, three, four is a big jump, five, six, turn and shoot. And he does it the same way every time. One, two, three, four is the big jump. Five, six, turn and shoot. And you need to keep that mental count. One, two, three, big jump for four. Five, six, turn and shoot. And if you do die on this boss, you will reappear right before the boss if you have lives left. So that's why I recommended that you suicide at the beginning of this stage if you're low on lives. You definitely want to have as many chances as possible against this boss because it is very difficult to get the pattern down. Now, this is You Can Beat Video Games, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the even easier strategy for defeating this boss. If you're sick and tired of this guy, instead of going in there and memorizing the pattern, you're only going to have to avoid the rocks one time with the Elect Beam trick. Due to a slight programming error, the Elec Beam becomes an overpowered weapon in this game. So, just avoid as many of the rocks as you possibly can. You're going to turn, shoot, and as soon as you connect, just start mashing the Select button. Normally, whenever you hit the boss with the Elec Beam, he'll get a few frames of invincibility, and the Elec Beam will fly right through him. But, when you hit the select button, it makes his invincibility wear off. And the elect beam has such a large hitbox that it'll keep hitting him every single time you hit the select button. So, you can easily defeat this guy in one shot. The elect beam trick may make the game a little bit less fun for you. So, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. I'm going to show you an alternate strategy wherever the elect beam trick can apply. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to, but if you're sick of fighting that yellow devil boss, the elect beam trick is the way to go. Alright, 
This is Dr. Wily's stage part two. There's going to be an invisible hole in the floor here. So if you want to collect those items at the end, you may want to use the magnet beam. And this is going to drop us down to Cutsman. Unfortunately, we don't have Gutsman's blocks here to fight Cutsman with. So we need to use our standard cannon. Try to pin him in the corner and jump over his shears. And it doesn't take that many shots to kill Cutsman. He may try to jump over you. Do your best to defeat him and head down here where we'll need to avoid some of these screwdriver enemies. And we can use the elect beam to shoot downwards at them. Collect that health and head back up. Coming over to the right is another screwdriver. Collect beam will take him out. And there's going to be another invisible hole in the floor here. And we're going to need to equip Cutsman's weapon because a Lechman is up next. Hit him quickly with the Cutsman weapon just as we did previously. Hopefully you won't die here. And we can walk through a hole in the floor on the left only after a Lechman has been destroyed. The bomb bombs are much trickier here than they were in Bomb Man stage. Uh, you want to try to get through this section as quickly as possible, but be very conscious of knockback. You don't want to end up in a hole at this point. Heading down here, we are very close to the next checkpoint. Take out these octopus batteries. You can use the magnet beam to get an extra life if you need it. Head down the ladder. Do not jump off to the left. You'll end up in a spike trap. The Elect Beam is a very effective way to take out these Octopus Batteries from above. Climb down. We are very close to the second boss of Dr. Wily's stage now. The Beaks can be easily eliminated with one shot of the Elect Beam there. And if you need to refill any of your stuff, you may want to get Fire here, because that is the preferred way to defeat the boss. And there's only one more room before the boss. We're at the next checkpoint now. So head on down. This is Clone Mega Man. With the fire weapon equipped, we're just going to keep shooting at Clone Mega Man and don't jump. He will keep jumping and shooting as if he assumes that you are going to jump. And if we don't jump, we're going to light this guy up. He's very easy. He may get close enough to get hit by the Firestorm shield as well. See, we're just not jumping. If we jumped, we would have been hit like a thousand times now. Fire, fire, fire. And that's it. Clone Mega Man is defeated. Now, if for some reason Clone Mega Man is too hard for you to defeat with Fire Weapon, well, you can use the Elect Beam trick on him as well, so here is an alternate strategy for fighting Clone Mega Man. Uh, one thing about using the Elect Beam weapon against Clone Mega Man is that Clone Mega Man's hitbox is a little bit smaller than some of the other bosses, so you may need to hit him with him twice or maybe even three times to actually kill him. Once again, this is a very, very easy way to defeat the bosses. Unfortunately, the boss of Dr. Wily Stage 3 isn't a very good one to use the Elect Beam trick on. There's only going to be one strategy for fighting him. There's a couple of selects, and that's the end of Clone Mega Man. Couldn't be easier. Dr. Wily gives us a bit of a break in the third section of his lair. It's not only one of the shortest levels in the game, but aside from the boss fight at the end, it's probably one of the easiest. Use the Firestorm or the Elect Beam here to take out the Octopus batteries and the screwdrivers. It's not necessary to clear all of the enemies, but sometimes it's nice to remove them so that they're not in your way. The Elect Beam will make short work of the screwdrivers as well as the octopus batteries. 
Now we've reached the narrow corridor. Water will change our jump physics a bit, making it easier to clear the enemies if you want to jump over them. And it starts out with these pang enemies, but it's going to change to killer bullets soon. And the killer bullets are a lot more dangerous to shoot with your weapons, so you just want to jump over them. Keep heading to the right and jumping over the bullets. And after a few more bullet jumps, we will be at the boss. Now, we definitely don't want to use the Elec Beam against the boss here because it will destroy those Gutsman blocks, and those are going to be critical for our success. We want to stand on top of the one in the middle and use our standard shot. Try to defeat this enemy as quickly as possible. Take out the second one. It could appear from any of those three ports. There's the third one. Alright, now after the third one, you get your Guts weapon. And bam, fourth one's down, fifth one's down, sixth one's down, and the very fast seventh one is gone. You need to be very precise with those Gutsman block throws, but if you can just get through the first three Bubble Boys, you'll be able to take out the last four very quickly. The fourth and final Dr. Wily stage is also very short but it contains the classic Mega Man boss gauntlet. Use the Elect Beam to take out the Watchers here at the beginning, but the main attraction in this stage is going to be that boss gauntlet. So if you're low on your weapon strength or lives, you may want to do a suicide right here at the beginning to refill all of that. Now, if you're protecting a high score and you don't want a suicide, there is another way to refill your weapons, so make sure to have your Magnet Beam refilled here and switch to the Elect Beam to take out the screwdrivers that are ahead. These screwdrivers are hidden way up in crevices in the ceiling, which makes them very difficult to hit with other weapons. So the Elect Beam is probably going to be your best bet here. Continue to the right, take out both of those screwdrivers, and then one more on the ceiling. And we're gonna head over to the right, equip your Magnet Beam so that we don't have to deal with this platform ahead. And we're going to find this item that the instruction manual calls the Yashichi. This is the only place the Yashichi appears and the instruction manual says it gives you 100,000 points. But it kind of doesn't tell you the most important thing about the Yashichi. It also refills all of your weapons and your health. If you need a nice refill, the Yashichi is a great way to get it, although it's a little bit dangerous to go through there. Go through the teleporter and we'll meet our first boss, Bomb Man. The Firestorm weapon will take him out just like we did the previous time. He likes to either stay in one side of the room or bounce around over your head. Either way, hit him with the Firestorm, switch to the Ice weapon after you defeat him because the next boss is going to be Fireman. We didn't have the Ice weapon when we fought Fireman previously, so we're going to use a similar strategy. It's just going to be a little bit easier this time. Once Fireman is dead, switch to the Elect Beam so that we can take out Iceman. Remember to hit Iceman right away, and then two more shots will finish him off. If you're worried about Iceman for some reason, you can mash select and use the Elect Beam trick on him. The final fourth boss on the boss gauntlet is going to be Gutsman. We can use the Bomb weapon here. He likes to either hang out on one side or jump towards you. Either way, three bombs will take him out. And if you don't like using the bomb weapon because it's slow, then feel free to use your standard shot. It's a viable way to kill him as well. Up here at the top, we've reached another checkpoint. If we were to die on the boss ahead, we will respawn right up here if we have lives left. Switch to your Firestorm weapon. And the key to fighting Dr. Wily is two things. First, we want to use the shield part of the Firestorm to hit him, and it will defeat him very quickly and switch him to his second form. Now, on the second form, you want to do the same thing. You want to focus on using the shield, and whenever you see him shoot at you, you want to kind of take a step to the right. If you take a step to the right right after he shoots you, you won't get hit by a shot. So that's all you need to do. 
wait for him to shoot and jump, hit him with the fire shield, jump, right, jump, fire shield, and that's it, very easy. Now, if you are struggling with Dr. Wily, uh, you may understand what I'm about to say. Right, you can use the Elect Beam trick on him as well. If you would prefer to use the Elect Beam strategy, switch to that before you enter the room. Dr. Wily will pop in. There he is in his little flying saucer. And we'll take the shot. As soon as it connects, start mashing that select button. Mash, 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 mash. We should be able to defeat his first form with one shot. Just keep mashing. I certainly think the other method is more fun, but this way you're going to take him out no problem. And then shoot him one more time and start mashing that select button. It takes a good number of hits to kill him with the Elect Beam, but just keep hitting Select and just watch his health meter fall. And that's it. You've beaten Mega Man. Dr. Wily will beg you for your forgiveness, but I don't think it's the last we've seen of him. No, Dr. Wily certainly hasn't learned his lesson yet, and it's only a matter of time before he's back with eight more Robot Masters to challenge Mega Man. For now though, all we can do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well I hope this video helped you finally end the evil domination of Dr. Wily and restored the world to peace, at least for now. If it did, make sure to give it a like and please let me know in the comments what strategies were effective for you. Did you like starting with Fireman so that we get the Firestorm weapon early? Was it good to have multiple strategies for the bosses in Dr. Wily's stage? Please let me know. Also make sure to subscribe for more videos, because we know that the never-ending battle continues until all destructive forces are defeated, and that's why we'll be back next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.